So I was able to sell some things. Hi guys, it's Misty and welcome back to my channel. This video is my weekly what sold on eBay for the week of February 2nd through February 9th. Now my sales were down 68.8%, but that's because my sales last week were up by 280%, I believe, because of the Nora Fleming pieces that I sold for an amazing profit. If you didn't see that video, I will link it in the description. So, you know, being that my sales were down 68%, I, I kind of know why. And I, and I knew that going in that my sales were going to be down, but they were, they were okay. So, Let's go ahead and see what sold for me last week on eBay. Go ahead and get started in the seller's hub and you can see here my total sales for the week were 853.23. My sales were down 68.8%, but we kind of talked about that was because I had such a great week with those Nora Fleming pieces that I sold last week that I knew that my sales were going to be down this week and it was pretty much a steady week as you can see here this was last week when I had those huge Nora Fleming pieces you can see it was like Bloop. but it was pretty a pretty steady week the worst my worst day of sales were probably on Saturday and they typically are so let's go ahead and see the first thing the first thing is this 1939 coca-cola this is a springboard girl that's the name of the print it is a serving tray uh, it is the artist was Sunblom was the artist and you can see down here in the corner where it was autographed right there. Um, this is an original tray. You can you can just you do this long enough and you can tell which is a reproduction which is an original. You do have to make sure that you look at that because there are a lot of reproductions out there. This one was in really good condition for its age and it sold for $75.50 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item is a vintage Walt Disney school bus lunchbox it was metal it was from 1961 it did not have the thermos it was very clean on the inside as you can see here but the outside did have some wear as most of them do it wasn't rusted out but the yellow was a little bit faded and I, one thing I wanted to mention too is make sure that when you're checking your listings I do global shipping and I don't know if this is another glitch but as you can see here this was not global shipping and I have all of my listings at global shipping and you can see here that these were all the places that I said in this listing that I would ship to. Luckily it didn't sell out of the country and I did sell it within the US but make sure that you're checking your listings to make sure that these this kind of shipping isn't in your listings. But this guy sold for $63.50 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item that I sold was this vintage men's Eugene Bellow Navajo turquoise ring. I couldn't tell if it was sterling. It did not have a sterling hallmark on it. Um, and the metal on itself on the inside of the ring was pretty worn. The turquoise itself here um, had a you know a crack through it which if it didn't if the turquoise itself was still in great condition it would have sold for well over $150 for this artist um, but it did have the crack in it so it sold for $95.50 I did do free shipping it shipped first class um, but you know these turquoise rings sometimes a lot of people just have them you know in their jewelry boxes and it's something that you're not wearing or going to wear then you know selling it to someone that will wear it and appreciate it kind of means a lot to me this was something that I had for a very long time did a little bit of research on it and finally listed it and it sold very very quickly next item is this vintage Siegel Unimatic double edge safety razor this was one thing that I had in the shop for like six dollars and fifty cents um, and you can see here, I sold it for $43.50. So that just goes to show you, I had this for sale in my antique store for about $6. And I sold it online for $43.50. So just goes to show you that you can find things to sell in an antique shop or an antique mall. And the buyer did pay shipping on these. These metal vintage razors, especially the double bladed ones, are highly highly sought after so when you, if you find these and they're in good 
still working, not rusted out condition, then they're definitely work, worth picking up if you can get them for a good price. And I did sell another one. You'll see it here in a few minutes. But the next thing was probably one of my favorite things that I sold was this baby beans. Do y'all remember baby beans? Baby beans. I had a baby beans when I was little, but she's from the 1970s. She's in her cute little outfit. Now, she did still work. She has a little pull string back here, and she still made <clears throat> her little creepy mama sounds and let's play. I can't remember what else she said, but but I did put that she does need cleaned. Her body was a little dirty. I did clean off her face, but I didn't, you know, clean the cloth part of her body, and I made sure I noted that in the listing. And baby beans, I had baby beans for sale in my shop for under $10 for a long, long time. And somebody bought her on eBay for $36 plus shipping. The next item is are these Dansko Women's Pebble Leather Mary Jane Comfort Shoes. I typically always buy Dansko when I can find them in good condition. They usually do sell rather quickly and rather well for me. Uh, and I do pick them up at Goodwill for $4.50. And these sold for $38.50 in the buyer paid shipping. The next item is this vintage retro patchwork, this granny square afghan with these really bright beautiful colors on them you can see here i folded it for the main photo but i did spread it out i took it outside on a nice day spread it out got the measurements and it sold for $35.50 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item is something else that I had in the shop for under $10 for probably four years. And it is this vintage mohair tiger hand puppet. Now, I believe that this is a stife. It, it was not in good condition. It was missing an eye. Um, it was missing part of its paw. Um, but the research that I had done on these, I had found the uh, other Stife ones, and they had the same markings. They had the same thread work. Um, he did not have his little button on his ear anymore. So I did put a question mark because I wasn't, I can't verify that it for sure is a Stife. But all of the hallmarks are there except for the little button. And uh, I did put that it's well loved. It was missing an eye. I, I had had some had some issues. Um, his eye was made out of glass, so that was another good characteristic that it was an, a, a stive piece. And he sold for $45.50 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item is something that I picked up at Goodwill. It's a Fleet Guard fuel filter for a Dodge truck. You know, when you see these things and they're brand new in the package, always look them up. Even if you think that you don't even know, I don't even know what this part is for. I don't, I don't know what this is used for. It's an air filter or a fuel filter. I have no idea. But it had a scan code on it. I scanned it in through the eBay app and they were selling for anywhere between $25 and $30. So it was worth picking up for $1.99. I did do free shipping. It was lightweight. It shipped first class. So, you know, don't count out these things, even though they're not vintage you could still make a profit. You could still turn a buck on those. These next things are, the next two items are things that I picked up at an auction um, grab or an auction box lot. And the first one were these Kiss, Disney Kiss Me, I'm Irish, Mickey and Minnie. These were park exclusive plush. Uh, and the Minnie still had her tag on her and they sold for $25.50 in the buyer paid shipping. The next guy was Goofy. He did not have his original tags on him, but he's still a park exclusive. Oh, no, he does have his tags on him. I'm sorry. He does have his tags on him. He was a park exclusive, and he sold for $18.50 in the buyer paid shipping. The next item is a vintage single stitch 1987 Star Trek The Final Frontier. It was a size extra large. It was in excellent condition. This was the back of it, and this was the front of it. And it sold for $40 and the buyer paid shipping. Oh, no, no, no. $40 free shipping. It shipped first class. The next item is this vintage Marks Trains. It's an O-scale 400 engine 040 Marks toy. Now, this, I have a couple of these. And I, I listed one because I just kind of wanted to see how it would go. I have no way of testing this to see if it works. And you can see here it is untested. But it did sell for $25.50. You have to look kind of close on these sometimes to find the Marks uh, Hallmark. But it's right there. You can see M-A-R with a big X. That is a Marks 
Hallmark, made in the USA. So this is a vintage train, highly collectible, and um, it sold for $25.50. The next thing is something that I had for a very, very long time, but this was something that I ended and did sell similar, and it moved it up, and it did sell. Um, and I will explain that at the last part of this video. This was a Mexican Castillo Talavera pottery, the small uh, picture with the gravy or salsa spoon. Basically, I think it's for salsa. And it has the little spoon that you can, or a little ladle that you can dip out the salsa. Sold for $16 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item is another vintage razor. This one is just a single blade. It is from Gem, G-E-M, Cutlery Company company um, patented 1912 safety razor and it sold for $20 and the buyer paid $4.60 shipping. This one did have a little bit of wear to it but it wasn't rusted out. It was still usable um, and like I said these can sell they can sell for you know anywhere between $20 and $40 or $20 and $50 depending on the condition. The next item is also something that I had in the antique shop for under $10. The frame on this is what sold. The picture it was not a tin type picture. Um, it just was a really cool frame with, let me see if I can zoom in here, with dragons on it. Do you see the dragons there? So I'm assuming just, I, and my guess is that this was something that was brought over um, you know, after the war, and you know, they, it was just a little picture frame. It was only three, and a, what, three and a half inches tall. It did have a little bit of condition issues. One of the little nails were out on the back, and it was just a cool frame. It sold for $18.50 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item is something else that I did. I ended it and I did sell similar, and it reboosted it up in the search ranks. And it was this um, buck, I'm gonna say this wrong, buck hand. Portobello Scotland Thistleware. It's a Thistleware mug. And um, I got this at Goodwill for 69 cents. You can see it here. It is marked on the bottom, made in Scotland. Sold for $11.64 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item is something that I had featured in one of my live sales that did not sell, so I listed it on eBay and it sold rather, pretty quickly, was this vintage Anchor Hawking Clear Textured Glass Piggy Bank. It had this amber rim on it and it sold for $12.50 and the buyer paid shipping. It was lightweight, it shipped first class. The next item, these next two items were something that someone bought as a bundle, um, and the first item were the Starbucks coffee mugs. They were 10 ounce, just your classic with the mermaid siren on them. I've had these for probably two years, so I'm so happy that they sold. I will not buy these again. I really am not buying any Starbucks mugs again unless they are the places, the one like the You Are Here mugs. Those are the only ones that are really worth the time. The market is so oversaturated with Starbucks mugs that I just pass on them. These finally sold, thank the Lord. <laughs> but they also sold with these Mickey Mouse monogram products, door hangers. These again were in a auction box lot, sold them for $8. This one was free shipping, but I was able to just include it in with these mugs and they did ship out for $8.25. The next item is this Beatrice, Beatrix Potter figurine of Benjamin Bunny. It was an F. Warren and Company Royal Albert dated 1989. This one isn't the one that was, I can't remember the name of the more highly collectible ones. This one was not it. I considered on keeping him, but I thought I'm just gonna list him because he was just so cute. He sold for $14.50 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item is this Anna Lee Irish Blarney Stone St. Patrick's Day doll. Brand new in the box. I picked this up at Goodwill, I think for $0.99, cents, and she sold for $15.99 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item are these Kunsto Women's Brown Leather Slip-On Fashion Platform Flip-Flop Sandals. These were actually mine, and I never wore them. So I did put them on eBay. They sold for $18, free shipping. They shipped first class. The next item is this vintage ceramic bathroom sign. If you sprinkle when you tinkle children for a children's bathroom, just a little ceramic piece wouldn't buy this again this was kind of one of those bad buys won't buy it again but it did sell for twelve dollars and fifty cents and the buyer paid shipping the next item is this creative accents made by dimensions it is a dolphin counted cross stitch kit 
and it was sealed brand new in the package sold for $15 and 25 cents in the buyer page shipping the next item is this vent are these vintage Westinghouse washing machine washer and dryer salt and pepper shakers uh, these were very very cute the one was missing the stopper in it but you know people buy these mainly not to use just to you know sit on a shelf in their laundry room mainly and this was this sold for $15 and 50 cents they were very lightweight they shipped first class I did offer free shipping and the last thing is this vintage pipe tobacco um, half and half tin this one sold for $10 it was very lightweight and it did ship for free and it was just three inches tall and um, these are always fun to buy and you're not going to make a ton of money on them a lot of times if you find some of these smoking tobacco tins it's best to to bundle them together and sell them as a lot i just kind of wanted to try it and see how this would go singly it sold pretty quickly for ten dollars with free shipping so i was able to sell some things and i have actually sold some things that i've had for a very very long time one of the things that I like to do, and I do this often, is I go through and I scroll on my phone to where the listings say ending late, latest. And I'll go through that and then see which items I've had for a long time. They're not really moving. So then I will end those listings and then I will do a sell similar. I'll change a couple words in the title make sure that the that it's in the right category because sometimes that has happened too when ebay had all of their glitches things were getting out of their a proper category so you just kind of go and double check that things are where they should be and then decide if you're uh, going to lower the price or adjust the price or maybe do free shipping you know you're just wanting to move an item that you've had for a very very long time at least that's what I do. And it tends to boost something in your search. So if you don't have anything new to list, I wish that was my problem because I have piles of stuff to list. But if you don't have any new things to list, it's one thing that you, one way that you can add a little bit of a refresher to some stale listings. Okay, now that's out of the way. Let's go ahead and talk about what my numbers are. All right, so for the week, this past week, my sales were $853.23. Again, as always, that doesn't include my taxes, my fees, and my cost of goods. I do keep my cost of goods very, very low. Most everything that I purchase, I don't spend over $5 on. So that is always key, especially when you're selling a wide variety of things to keep your cost of goods as low as you possibly can. That way you can adjust your prices and maybe get rid of some things that could possibly been a bad buy. I have made bad buys. We all do it. Don't beat yourself up over it. It just happens. You learn from it and you move on. I sold 29 items this week, so that wasn't too shabby. I didn't list a whole lot this week, not as much as I wanted to with my son being sick. It's just been a crazy week. So my goal this week is to keep listing every single day and get my listings up to where I want them to be. So with that being said, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you it gives you a little bit of inspiration to maybe look for some certain things when you are outsourcing, knowing some things that are selling for me maybe they'll sell for you too but maybe they don't because everybody's reselling diff business is very very different sometimes what works for me doesn't work for other people what works for them doesn't work for me it all just boils down to just coming up with what works best for you and what works best for your business but i hope that you did enjoy this video if you did please make sure that you give it a thumbs up if you're not subscribed hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification and you'll be notified every time i upload a new video and with that i'm going to go ahead and say goodbye